hello and welcome to today's video and we are at Spurn Point. Um, I came up here earlier in the year and realised there was so much to explore out here so I decided that I'll pop out here again today. Now weather report said it was going to be an okay night and I thought we'd be here for sunset which would be really nice and I am wrong as so often the case <laughs> the cloud is very uh, very apparent so I think we're going to be missing sunset but never give up. Hopefully we'll get some images like this. So it's always a bit of a, a pain to know what to do really when you're in these sorts of situations. You come out with um, an idea in your mind, you know, it's going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot of water, there's going to be lots of reflections hopefully, there's going to be lots of good things to, to photograph and the sun lets you down. What do we do? Well, we don't give up, we don't panic, that's the main thing. Um, it's just a case of working with the light, I think, now. And so uh, what I'm starting to do, rather than looking at the bigger picture and you know the wide vistas um, that make up a really nice picture, is to then bring the focus point down to something maybe in the mid ranges, you know, something that, um, something nice that will fill up the frame. Uh, and then if we still can't find anything, then I basically I'll bring the uh, point of focus down, down, down until we get to this. Okay, so I've brought my focus down to this point here. And what I've got is uh, a nice little log, really, really weather beaten. I've got lots of uh, detail and stuff on it, just laying in the, in the sand. But I like the way it's pointing off to the old lighthouse uh, over in the right hand corner, um, which you might just be able to see. So as a first shot, just to sort of like uh, brush off the cobwebs, um, I'm basically taking uh, a, an image of the front of the um, log. And I'm gonna, again, focus stack on this one as well. I'm still looking at F11, uh, so everything's gonna be a bit soft in the background. So the background is a little bit messy because of the jetty, I think there's a, an oil where they bring all the oil and stuff in. Uh, there's some pipes and stuff in the background, which I kind of wanna uh, not make too much of a, a fuss about. So uh, I'm focusing on the log and focusing on midways between here and the lighthouse and then I'll focus on the lighthouse and then anything after that it can go nice and soft so first image of the day here it is Okay, so what are the three things that make a perfect or uh, an acceptable image? Now, obviously, firstly is light. Now, with the first one, light is not really a, a thing at the moment because it is very grey, overcast. We might have the chance of a few sun rays coming through the clouds, but it is not very dynamic at all. And like I may have said earlier in the video, that uh, I think we might miss out on the very low light of uh, a sunset going down, but we'll work with what we've got. So what I've done with the image, this next one is composition and subject matter. I mean, I suppose you could basically tie those together quite nicely. So the subject is the very austere lighthouse, uh, which has got some weird knocking coming from out the minute. It's a bit disconcerting. <laughs> But there's that, and obviously there's the composition of where it sits within the frame. And so what I've done is, rather than put it exactly on the left-hand third of the image, if I was to bring it onto the right-hand third of the image, then the lens basically picks up some of the industrialization over on the left-hand side. I don't want that in the image. I kind of want a nice high key kind of feel to this one. So I've moved the subject to the left hand third so that we've got lots of open uh, sea and sand and not a lot going on so 
given that minimalist sort of approach. Uh, sitting on the left hand third and yeah the subject matter which is the third ingredient is the lighthouse and who doesn't like a good lighthouse and this is the image. Okay, so I've just brought myself down from where I was just now, just up on the side of the um, beach there, uh, just down to below the high tide line. And I wanted to try and make use of these ripples and the uh, reflections in the, the, the rock pool. And the sun just popped out just beautifully just now and uh, just backlit the subject. And so what I did is I did a, a five bracket, uh, five image bracket um, image and um, combining them back in post. Um, I'm hoping that's covered the dynamic range to give us this picture. just moved on a little way from where that lighthouse is and I didn't realize but these are barracks um, from way back when and uh, I'm assuming this is where they used to tie the boats up maybe or whatever because the barracks are just over behind you um, I believe so I might do a little bit of research on that when I get back but you've got these wonderful sort of teeth sticking out into onto the beach and uh, over the years they've worn away and as you can just see in the corner there where it's broken away and mother nature's had her way with this um, concrete and worn it away you've got all the substructure still kind of just clinging there um, but uh, I just I just really like the way the, there's just lots of um, texture and color just within a very sort of bland hole as it were and uh, let me just talk you through it a little bit more. This is the uh, hole with all the wonderful uh, rotting timbers and what have you, just uh, the substructure for everything that's behind these, I don't know what you would call them, pillions or whatever, I don't know. And then you can see sort of where the barracks were just there. But uh, you've got this gaping hole. And what I've done, I'll bring you in here, is focusing on the hole, but as you can see, just on the the left and the right we've got these little diamonds and where obviously this is a point um, as you can see this is a point if we get the there we go it's a point going on there we've got these shadows just creating a little bit of a um, a little bit of a thing in the corners <laughs> I just quite like the way they kind of cut off in the corners you've got these little cut diamonds in the corner which basically I think just frame that hole up quite nicely so yeah, that's the frame, that's the framing. And uh, I'm just focusing slap bang in the middle. And as I say, I just like the greens and the golds and the browns that are all contained within that natural frame. Well, I like it anyway. <laughs> so if it's worked out, this is the image.
what we learned today. Well, the three key ingredients of uh, an image are light, composition, and subject matter. Now, subject matter, I think we've done okay with uh, subject matter-wise. Uh, it's always a bit of a, a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Um, compositionally, um, I think working on the thirds, I mean, the, the, the rule of thirds isn't you know, a hard and fast rule, but obviously keeping that in mind for balancing the picture, letting an image breathe on one side to the other, I think is fine. And it's being in this sort of environment with the light that we've had. Obviously, the light hasn't been particularly on our side. I was hoping for some nice um, dynamic light as the sun went down, but it's really coming in quite, uh, quite windy and uh, rainy now. So I'm going to have my coffee and I'm going to skedaddle. I think it's about a three mile hike back. So it's probably another hour or so uh, to get back. But likewise, by slightly overexposing your image and going for that high key um, fine art type uh, image, um, I think it works out right. But don't forget also you to bracket your images as well. And so when you do get a, a, a show of sunshine that um, you've got something there, maybe a little bit of uh, dynamic sort of light going on if the sun does appear. But I hope you liked today's video and um, leave a like and a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye for now.